I'm Andy Gilbert and I run Gilby Films. I retired from sport and launched myself into work. I uh, started off working in insurance, which wasn't really for me, if I'm honest. Um, after working there for a few years, my then girlfriend, now wife, was working at the BBC and she was going to go off down to Barcelona to the Paralympic Games to cover those. Uh, which sounded rather interesting to me, go back and see some of my old swimming friends. Um, so I took some holiday, went with her and ended up working with her, uh, working as a fixer, but then I ended up reporting and doing a few few uh, presentation uh, bits with her and absolutely loved it. I thought, this is, this is really what I want to do. So I was working at the BBC for 15 or 16 years, and so looking after much of the day uh, at the time I left. And the, the reason for leaving being that they moved the whole of BBC Sport up to Salford. So the idea is born out of frustration really, at the lack of uh, information out there for people with disabilities when it comes to visiting a, a venue or an attraction. Can they actually, can they actually access it? So um, I thought, well, combine what I know with audiovisual content and making TV programmes and telling stories and packaging up messages, uh, an access film is the, is the obvious answer. It, it caters for uh, the disability market, which is, which is massive, uh, so it helps businesses tap into this market and it helps disabled people get a real honest feel and understanding of, of what awaits them. So I've been coming to London Zoo with my young daughter since she was about two and I've always known how accessible London Zoo is and it was one of our favourite places to come as a family and I just thought that they would really benefit from, from, a, a, from one of our films. I want the Gilby Films brand to be all about integrity and honesty, um, films that you can really rely on, films that you can trust. Uh, and what's really important to me is being a beacon of diversity um, in as much as I really want to employ, nurture and develop disabled talent both in front of camera but also behind. Uh, I know how difficult it is getting into the broadcast industry and I just want to do what I can to help give people a bit of a leg up. Well my background is in sailing. I grew up um, my parents had a sailing boat, it's all I ever wanted to do was sail and go to sea. And uh, someone seven years after my accident introduced me to a dinghy, a sailing dinghy, called a Challenger Trimaran, and I sat in this little boat and I pulled that main sheet in and the tiller and it accelerated across the water and I felt that wind, that spray, the, just that elation of, of being back on the water again. And it was at that moment that I realised this is what I wanted to spend the rest of my life doing. And it was when I finished sailing across the Atlantic, I came up with this idea, why don't I create uh, a boat that can take other disabled people, my friends and family, and their friends out on the water, because clearly there was something stopping them, and it was the right boat. It, the whole Wet Wheels thing started with me and this boat, the original boat, Wet Wheels Solent, um, and I was not sure how it was going to work. I, I, there's me, you know, I've invested a huge amount of money and time on this magnificent vessel and I wasn't sure how it was going to work. Well quite quickly after year one when we took nearly a thousand people on the water that I started to think I've got something quite magic here. That These boats are now collectively going to be taking nearly 5,000 people a year on the water um, and I don't want it to stop there. I want, I want there to be another five at least boats around the country in the next five years. Every single day is a moving day. You know, every single day we, I could tell you stories about people that have come on the boat and for them it's a once in a lifetime experience and for us it's, we're very proud to be able to run this business and run it successfully and develop it and, uh, and hopefully we'll go from strength to strength. When I first started working in a private practice, doing receptionist work and physio assistant work when I was at school and then went straight to university and qualified as a physiotherapist in 2001. I started doing a combination of full-time NHS work and private practice work um, in the evenings and weekends um, to try and get my skill mix up really. Um, when I started to realise that there was a gap in the market, it um, was very much about people not being offered the breadth of services that were available in rehab. So we started off renting ad hoc rooms in another clinic 
And then we're now in the position where we've got our own building here in Doncaster, our practice in Ripley in Derbyshire and our own offices in Sheffield. We bought this place um, at the end of last year and it was an electrical shop at that time. Um, the owners were retiring and so we've stripped it back to brick and then built exactly what we want really. So we've got the wide doors, we've got the accessibility, we've got the facilities, so it's been a fantastic bonus really. The other thing that's happened over the past year is that we um, became very involved in looking at robotics, and particularly the walking skeletons. Um, and with Matthew, it was just a very heavy, very slow process. We were getting two or three steps in a session. With the exoskeleton, he was doing 500, 600, 700, 800 steps in an hour session, and that including getting in and out of the robot. So it's absolutely massive. We just can't replicate that in rehab with hands-on approach. Um, so it made a big difference. There's always somebody fighting a bit bigger battle than the one I'm fighting, whether that's my battle because of my deafness or my battle because business is hard there's somebody else out there that's got a bigger fight than me and if I'm helping them fight that then that's got to keep me going and that's got to keep my business going.